It's cast on day. Welcome, I'm Jana with Pearl Together, and I'm excited that it's finally the day to cast on our Maya cardigan. This sweater is a yoke Icelandic sweater that's knitted from the sleeves from the bottom up. You begin with the sleeves, you knit those two up, you and then you cast on the body and knit that up, join everything together, and then decrease the yoke. It's two color stranded color work. And it's going to be fantastic. It's worsted or Aran weight, depending on the yarn you're using. So it's going to work up fairly quickly. All right, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to new patrons from this month. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon community over at www.patreon.com forward slash pearl together. Happy to have you supporting the channel and so thankful. Patrons like you help keep the lights on, so to speak, and help keep these videos coming to you each and every week. So a big hearty thank you to Mary, Anne, Stephanie, Diana, and Lynn for joining me over at Patreon.com. If you're new to what's going on here, we're knitting the Maya Cardigan Sweater by Aline Magnuson. The link is down below in the video description. You'll definitely want to make a swatch for this sweater. I did a swatch video last week and I'll put that in the video description as well. So if you haven't done that yet, watch that video and do your swatch before continuing on. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're starting with the sleeve. I've cast on 36, I divided them in half, and now I'm just gonna begin my ribbing on Magic Loop for approximately two inches. And for me, that's gonna be, I'm gonna make the ribbing actually a little bit longer, um, but for me, I think I'm gonna aim for 18 or 20 rows. All right, keep in mind too that we're using our smaller size needles for the ribbing and the larger size will be for the color work and the main knitting of the sleeve. So whatever that is for you, um, I did not get gauge with the needles suggested on the pattern and that's totally okay. That's the value of swatching and it doesn't matter what size I'm using you need to swatch and get gauge with whatever needle works for your personal knitting tension. So yeah, you definitely need to swatch for this project because you're gonna be spending a lot of time uh, doing color work as well as knitting a whole entire sweater so you want it to fit. All right, I finished my ribbing for two and a quarter-ish inches or whatever you prefer. And I'm knitting the size medium for my daughter. And so here's where I'm gonna go divert from the pattern or go off script. Um, let me show you the one sleeve I already have done. Okay, so the designer would like for you to do your increases evenly from the beginning of your round. You would start at the beginning of the round and you would increase one stitch before your beginning of the round and then afterward. So you would do increases periodically every however many rows that are per asked, you know, indicated by the pattern, you would do these increases evenly all the way up. And that's going to make your sleeve gradually increase in a diagonal sort of a funnel kind of a way. But if you do that for the size medium and I believe 2XL, your pattern will not match up at the beginning of the round. And maybe that's not a big deal for you. I chose to divert from that and do increases more abruptly here at the beginning. And then also I did it again in some of these uh, plain rows here, like row 10, row 19. Maybe this was row 19. Anyway, I chose to do them more abruptly and all at the same time so that I could maintain the continuity of the pattern. So you need to make a decision whether you would prefer to do that or, or not. That's the way I'm going to show you how for the medium and the 2x so their stitch counts will come out the same and your motif will match up. Um, otherwise if you're knitting the other sizes it will work out okay by just following what's prescribed in the pattern. So since I'm knitting the medium for my daughter I've just finished the ribbing and so now what I'm going to do is increase as suggested by the pattern um, I'm going to increase eight stitches so I need to do four on this half and four stitches more on the other half. So what I decided to do, that you do whatever increase works for you, is but whenever I have ribbing, I can hide pretty well a uh, knit front back. So I need four on this side and I have four purl sections so I can evenly distribute those increases. So let me show you what I mean. So first I'm just gonna knit two just to get my round started. Then I'm gonna knit into this one because we're not doing ribbing anymore. So I'm just gonna knit in the front 
leave the stitch on the needle, swing my right needle around and knit into the back. And that's going to create a purl bump or a, like a knit zip on the front of that right there. But it doesn't matter much because it's going to be hidden by this purl section in the ribbing. So that's one increase done. So now I'm just going to carry on doing that in the center of that purl section. So again, knit through the front and then knit through the back and carry on. So that's two increases on this side. So here I am again on a purl section, knit into the front, leave it on the needle, and knit into the back. So I'm going to do this all the way around. A couple other choices you could make is simply doing the bar increase where you lift that center strand between the two and knit into the back of that. You could do that. You could do the lifted increase. You just do whatever increase works for you. Just make sure you have them evenly spaced all the way around. And this is I'm just doing it as written in the pattern thus far, but I'm going to show you in just a minute how I'm going to adjust the rest. While I'm finishing this up, I want to give a big shout out to Miriam, the cozy chickadee on Ravelry. Um, she was kind enough to write project notes, and that's how I found her suggestions on how to do these sleeve increases for this medium size and the 2X so that things will match up. So thanks, Miriam, for writing good project notes on Ravelry. It is appreciated. I'll put the link down below to her project page if you want to have it in a written version what she decided to do. So let me double check that I've got the correct stitch counts here. Okay, so right now I have 44 stitches on my needle. And what I need to do now is just knit a plain round. Just knit one time around to even out your increases that we did so abruptly. And then we're going to increase a little bit more because 44 is not divisible by 8. So after I knit this round, I'm going to increase four more stitches, two on each half of my magic loop. And so then I'll have a total of 48, which is a multiple of 8, and then my motif will line up properly. So rather than evenly spacing my increases up the sleeve, I'm going to do um, some strategically placed increases on row 10, for example, and I believe row 19. I'll double check that before we get there. Okay, after I've knitted that plain round, as I mentioned a moment ago, I need to increase four more stitches so I have a total of 48. However, I'm, not, I'm no longer doing this ribbing, so I'm gonna change my method of increasing um, just so it matches what I'm doing a little better. So I'm gonna go about I only need to increase two stitches on this side, so I'm just going to do that like a third of the way in and then two thirds of the way in, roughly. So probably around I'll knit seven or eight stitches and then do an increase. When I would choose to do the lifted increase here, you can do the bar increase where you go in here and then just knit through the back loop. That's totally fine. Um, I prefer the lifted increase, which is lifting the leg from the stitch below and putting that on and knitting that right into that. But do what works for you. Okay, I'll do the same thing on the other side and then we'll make sure we have the correct stitch count for the size we're making. All right, that last increase round I did to get up to 48 stitches for the medium size, that's basically going to take the place of row one on the chart. So I'm on page five of the pattern and I'm now going to knit the sleeve chart and that last increase row that I did is row one. So now I'm gonna start by adding in my contrasting color and we're gonna knit the chart. All right, the other thing I wanna mention here is due to my own tension issues, I need to size up when I begin the color work section. So I'm going up a needle size as I begin this next round. So I'm just gonna you know, let this hang out and I'm gonna knit the stitches onto my new needle size. So when you begin a new color, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, I have a video about my five tips for fair aisle or two color stranded knitting. So you can certainly go and watch that. Um, I'm just gonna hold this down with my left hand and knit the first stitch. Then I'll put it over on the left because I want my pattern color to be in my non-dominant hand. And then I'll just go ahead and begin with my pattern, being mindful of my tension and keeping these stitches spaced out enough. And again, I'm gonna you know, tighten that down just a little bit on that tail so it's not too gappy. And I'm just gonna carry on with my first row of color. 
All right, as I mentioned in the previous video about swatching, what I choose to do here is I have my last contrasting lighter colored thread and I'm almost to the end of my my row or my you know my half where the needle junction is and I'm going to go around the corner to begin the new row and that'll be the case here as well. What I want to do now is make sure that this float is going to be long enough to go around the needle junction. So what I like to do, and I forgot to do it here, which is why I'm reminding myself to tell you, is you go into the last stitch as if to knit and put that float right up over the top of your needle. Hold it down with your left finger. Knit that last stitch, or wrap as if to knit, and then take your float contrasting color back off the wrap so what you've done there is just laid it over the top of your wrap. Okay, then go ahead and pull that stitch through like normal. So what that does is just bring that contrasting color along so that when you switch and start knitting down this other side, it's already in position and your float is already kind of pre-measured. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm at the beginning of row four and there's a couple of things I want to point out also. So we knit the three to begin the row and then three of the contrasting color or your pattern color, not the background color. And now you'll notice you have five stitches of your background color. So usually five is just fine to go across a float. Um, if you're concerned about it at all, you can go to this third stitch right in the middle and then do the thing where you carry the float. So just put that over the top of your needle, wrap as if to knit and put that back down and that will just carry your float along so you're not having to as long of a float. Now normally five is just fine, but it's a good technique to keep in mind for when you have more than five, like seven stitches, you might want to tack down that float in the middle, like on stitch four if you have seven. So just something to keep in mind for later. Just a note, I did tack down the third stitch when I go around the corner where this needle junction is because I think um, that way I'm not going to cut across the corner diagonally with the float and cause any puckering right there. The other thing to notice is along about row five or six, the background color swaps places with the pattern color. So now I am holding the lighter colored yarn in my right hand and the contrast in my left hand because you'll notice that particularly in row six and seven, the lighter color becomes the background now as opposed to the first few rows. So might be a good time to switch so that you have your lighter colored in the in your dominant hand going through the rest of the chart until we get toward the end of the sleeve chart. I'm on row nine and this is where we do have a span of seven stitches between the darker color. So I am going to want to do a float after three. So on stitch four that's actually the same color as my float so it's a good place to do that in case your float color, you know, peeks through a little bit, it's a good place to tack it down. So same thing. I'm just going to lay it over after I put my stitch through to make a knit. I'm going to wrap my stitch like normal and then put this back over the top. So it's just coming over the top and then on the next stitch is actually when it gets tacked down. So it's a good place to do it in case you have a float that peeks through. It's not going to cause any blips because the stitch in the lower row the row below is the same color. All right, now I'm on row 10 and I'm gonna go ahead and increase another four stitches here. And the reason I can get away with, with it being a multiple of four for my whole stitched count for the meantime is because rows 11 through 17, the pattern is a multiple of four. So I'm just on row 10, I'm gonna do another increase. So then for the medium size, I will have a stitch count of 52. And you'll have to look and see what yours is going to be for the um, 2XL. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just knit four to eight stitches in. I'm only going to increase two on this side, but I'm going to do the lifted increase. So I want to make sure I'm lifting the same color that I'm knitting with right now. Or again, you can do this bar increase. Um, do whatever you feel is looks the best for the way that you knit. Okay, I'm on row 19 of the chart and I'm going to increase another four stitches here on this plain round using your increase method of choice. And then when I'm done with the whole chart, I'll increase another four so that I have a total of 60. And then I can just continue knitting the sleeves. 
So you do whatever works for you as far as increasing, but I, again, chose to do those increases on row 10 and 19 and then after the chart. I'm going to go ahead and knit through the rest of the chart and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Okay, then I finished the chart and it's looking fantastic. So now all you need to do is for the medium size, when you're finished with the chart, just increase another four stitches so you have 60 or if you're doing the double extra large, then just carry on and do your increases along the front edge like this, like you would on the inside underarm where you are alternating, you know, doing a right leaning and a left leaning on either side, or you can just simply do what I'm doing and space them out however you see fit as you're going, as you're going up to increase the sleeve. But, you know, I don't think that looks bad at all. So, and I like that the pattern is continuous pretty much, and we've maintained that continuity. So, okay, so go ahead and finish knitting the sleeve, and we will begin casting on the body next time. This is the other one, this sleeve I have almost done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on, put some needles back on here and continue on, and then when it's about the length I think it should be, I'm gonna put it on waist yarn. Um, I'm not gonna cut anything, I'm just gonna put this on waist yarn and you can separate the stitches as indicated in the pattern to get ready to attach everything together with the body. Um, you can also, you know, I'm gonna kind of wait until I have the body knitted so I can make sure that everything is the length that I'd like it to be and we'll address that when we get there. When we get the body knitted up, we'll address that and try everything on before we join everything together in a similar way that you can try on your raglan from the top down sweater. Okay, when you get done with your first sleeve and you think it's long enough, put it on some waist yarn and set aside the stitches that we're going to use to join with as indicated in the pattern. Just follow what she says there and then start your second one. So we're going to knit both sleeves first and then next time we'll cast on the waistband and then knit the body up and I'll show you how I'm going to manage the steek. The steeking stitches I'm going to do, I'm going to do it the fair isle way, which is a little bit different than the Icelandic traditional way. So I'll switch that up a little bit and I'll leave that up to you, which method you might want to try. And we'll get to that next time. There'll be two weeks between these videos to give you plenty of enough time to knit both your sleeves. So look for the next video regarding the Maya cardigan in two weeks. We're running the knit along over in the Ravelry and Facebook groups, so I'd love to see your progress pictures of your sleeves and your swatches. Be sure to post, use the hashtag MayaCardiganKAL for knit along. I'd love to see what you're doing. Thanks for watching. <laughs>